Uh, hello everyone and uh, uh, welcome. So in this video we are going to show how to work with JSON files in C++ Builder. In one of my previous videos I already uh, showed you how to work with XML files and when it comes to XML it's pretty easy because you have XML data binding wizard tool that will take a sample of your XML file and it will generate a code that you can use to uh, add data, update, delete, uh, etc. So uh, that's that's really simple, right? But when it comes to uh, JSON, things are a bit more complicated because you don't have such tool and you have to write the code manually. So uh, what we are going to see here is uh, uh, how to uh, read uh, content of JSON file and how to, of course, write something into JSON file. For that purpose, I have created this uh, sample address book application and uh, it's, it's nothing but uh, some address book that contains uh, contacts that are sp uh, stored inside JSON file. So this is the sample file. As you can see, this is the JSON document and I have an array here called address book and inside that array I have uh, two contacts. Okay, so when I run the application, uh, I click load from file and my application loaded the content of the uh, JSON document. So as you can see, John Doe, first street, 15, Paris. Uh, the second contact is also correct and everything works. So the question is, how uh, does it work? Well, when I click move from file, uh, this is the code required to do it. But first you need to include this system JSON HPPP header. So that, is, that uh, header is required because uh, in this approach that I'm going to show you, we use uh, JSON objects and uh, these are declared in this header. So uh, the approach is to uh, first load the entire JSON file into a memory. Uh, that's why I created this string stream object, uh, JSON stream, and it loads the content of the address book uh, JSON into memory. So it loads from file. Second, uh, we need to create JSON objects, and that is the key here. Uh, so when working with JSON, you, uh, in this case, working with JSON objects. So each part of the JSON uh, document needs to be represented by an object. Okay, so first we are going to create an object that represents the entire JSON document. Then uh, we are going to create an object that represents only the array part. And then when we have the array, we can get the items from that array, meaning these values. So we create an object uh, that represents the entire file here. Okay, and uh, we call it JSON file, and that JSON file object, uh, its content is initialized by the content of the file. As you can see, you see here JSON string, data string, this is the content from the address book JSON. Okay, so we have a JSON file object that is initialized by the content of the file. And now what I want is to create uh, an array object. Why? Because uh, if I have the array object then I will be able to uh, access its items and I need the items because I want to read them. Right? And as you can see I have the uh, tjson array. Uh, this is the object that represents the array and that array uh, is uh, the address book array from the current file. So this is the address book tag and that means this object here, contacts array, will have this value here. Okay, only this part. And we can test that really easily. So if I have the application message box JSON file I'm not going to use the show message because uh, it will not show all characters if uh, there are too many of them. So This is the entire file and this should be only the uh, array part. So let's run this. Load from file. As you can see, this is the entire file. You have here the address book uh, name of, of the array. And now when I click OK, I only have the array. Okay, and that was the point. This object represents the entire file and this object only represents the array. So, like I said, that's the key point here uh, to identify or represent each part of the JSON file with some 
uh, JSON object. Okay, in this case it's a simple JSON object, in this case it's an array. And once I have this array, it's a context array, I go through all of his items from zero to count. And in this case uh, the count is uh, two because I have only two items inside this array. Okay, and what I do, I simply say, okay, name is uh, from that array current item get value name and get that value as a Unicode string. Okay, then get a surname as a Unicode string, I get street as a Unicode string, but you have here a house number. As you can see, house number doesn't contain quotes, so it's uh, an integer and a get value integer. Okay, so uh, that's how it's done. And once I get all these values from uh, a current contact, I create a new list view item and show uh, that data inside the list view. And that's how it's done. So run it again, load, and that's it. So we uh, created JSON file object that represents the entire JSON file. Then we created a contact array that only contains the contacts. And when we have the contact array, we go through his items one by one, and that's it. So, uh, but this is a very simple uh, JSON uh, example. Uh, usually JSON files are pretty large, and uh, I'm not sure this approach uh, is good uh, for that purpose because uh, uh, you would need to represent, like I said, each part of the JSON file with an object, and then it would um, the code would be simply I don't know ugly because uh, you would have so many objects to worry about. Uh, but like I said, I, I hope uh, this part will uh, be developed further and uh, in some time to have a library that that. Uh, uh, can give us a uh, read and write from JSON in a much easier, simple way. But currently, this is how it is. Okay, so uh, this is how we read the content. But now let's uh, add some new content. For example, AAA. When I click the Add New Contact, I'll, I'll save nothing to uh, JSON just yet. Uh, when I click this button, it simply adds this data to list view component. So nothing is saved inside the file. And I can check that if I load from file. As you can see, that uh, line was not added there. So I add here and I can also click uh, delete selected. So I I'll show you the code. Uh, this is the code that adds a uh, new contact inside the list view. And this is the code that deletes the selected item. Okay. But now, uh, if I add a new contact, as you can see, nothing is uh, still inside the file. I can say save to a file. And now I click here, and it says, do we want to reload it? Yes, and now, as you can see, I have a new contact, uh, contact here. Okay, I can change, for example, the house number, and I click this one, and I'll say update, or replace the selected, and now save to file. So this should be changed, and it is. Okay, uh, if I uh, delete the selected one and save to a file, reload, now that contact is gone. So how did we do that? Now how did we save to a file? Well, uh, when I click here, first you can also use a JSON objects to save to a file or to generate a JSON content. And I would definitely not recommend that because it's a practical nightmare. So, uh, as you can see, this is uh, that is the part that I just commented here. You have uh, four objects in, in this case: a string builder, a string writer, a JSON text writer, a JSON object builder, and then this circus here to to create the content and uh, simply not worth it. Okay, that's that's hugely complicated and not worth the effort. Instead, uh, this is the part that I wrote manually. I simply generate uh, 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 JSON content by working with a simple string. Okay, so I have a string JSON doc, and I say uh, it's uh, first line. Uh, it's initialized with this character here. Then I manually add this part here, and and start the array. And when I start the array, I read uh, through all the items inside the list view. And add them manually. So pretty much, I add the, uh, I create the uh, JSON content manually. So without using the JSON objects and all the uh, complications about 
And I, I think it's much easier. You don't need to know the objects. You don't need to know the methods. Uh, it's, it's a simple, single, uh, simple string manipulation. And uh, uh, when I, I'll just comment this part here to show you. Uh, so what is the end result? Load for file and I'll say save the file. The end result is this uh, uh, text here. That is actually the JSON content, right? But it's uh, as you can see, I want it to be beautified uh, uh, like this, uh, so it has line breaks uh, and indents. Uh, so I will uh, use uh, parse JSON value uh, and format by indent two. Okay, so it can be a large indent if you want. And then let's see how um, will it look like. So load from file, save to file. This is without indents and line breaks, or line breaks, and this is with line breaks and indents. Okay, this is exactly what we want. So uh, once we have uh, this uh, unified JSON doc, then we need to save it to a file, and that's simply by creating, for example, a string stream. Uh, Add a JSON doc inside that stream and then save the stream to a text uh, to to a file as a JSON uh, others book JSON file right so when I run this load from file so as we demonstrated added something new add contact uh, save to file so this is uh, not beautified uh, load it. And we can see here if I select and delete, save the file, load, it's gone. Okay, we need to comment this uh, message box. Okay, and that's how it's uh, done when it needs to be uh, written to a file. So when working with JSON, like I said, you don't have a tool like XML Data Binding Wizard, so you need to write your own code, uh, meaning write code manually. Uh, you can use JSON objects in a way that I already described to read from a JSON file, but when it comes to uh, writing to a file, it's simply... Um, I, I believe that this is much easier and faster approach than, than dealing with uh, JSON objects. Uh, and well, that's pretty much it. I hope uh, that you will have uh, some use of it, uh, especially like I said, because JSON is becoming increasingly popular, and that's why I hope uh, that in some sooner time we will have a better library that will allow us to uh, work with JSON much more faster and efficiently. Thank you for watching, and see you next time.